This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up? What's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swaggy Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And we are back for another edition of the Primetime Podcast here on Most Available Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything college football. We're almost, we're almost getting into college basketball season, Brandon. That's going to start up next week, I believe, are the first actual some good games maybe starting this weekend. Cannot wait for that to roll around and get some big stories from college basketball along with our college football. But before we get into everything we're going to talk about today, you guys know the drill. A little bit of housekeeping before the podcast. Number one, if you have not already, check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. Your way to support the channel more so than liking the video, watching the video, subscribing to most valuable podcast. That link is down below in the description. Then also go on to iTunes and rate the primetime podcast. Give us that sweet five-star rating and then rate all the other podcasts, the fast break, the onside kick, the Rick and Johnny podcast. Give us that sweet and succulent five-star rating that we deserve. But Brandon, we got a jam packed show for you guys today. And we're going to be talking some SEC football. We got Auburn and Georgia. Could Auburn play spoiler to the SEC's playoff hopes? Then we got the Notre Dame-Miami game, or as I like to call it, the Catholics versus the Convicts. We got that game going on this week. Miami, Notre Dame. Who needs that win more? And then we're going to look at the Big 12 before it picks. Can TCU end Baker Mayfield and the Sooners' playoff hopes? And then at the end, like I mentioned, We're going to make our picks for week 11, but Brandon, let's jump right into it. We're talking about, I'm going to say this is your resident conference because you're an Alabama fan. This is where you kind of live. You kind of make your little home set up shop here, unless it's basketball, then you're a Tar Heel fan and the ACC is your true home. But I want to ask you, with Auburn playing Georgia this weekend, definitely not an opponent that Georgia can overlook, whether it's Georgia this week or Auburn in the Iron Bowl, do you see this Auburn team upsetting either Georgia or Alabama and spoiling the SEC's hope of having two college football playoff teams? No, I don't see him being able to pull the upset, honestly, Ricky. I I think that we've seen a really, really good Georgia team. They've only given the most points they've given up in a game is 28 points. That was to Missouri. That was in a win, 53-28. I, I think Georgia's defense is too good. It's They've been very dominant. They've been very, very good. They've been able to get things done. And then offensively, they've just been solid. They've been solid all around uh, the football this year. And that's why they're currently number one in, uh, in the playoff poll with Alabama, you know, a close two. But I, I, I don't think that this Georgia team is going to let up now. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's kind of where I'm at. And, you know, Auburn, they've they've looked good uh, for the most part throughout this season. Jared Stidham has looked pretty solid at quarterback. He looked solid this past weekend against uh, A&M, 20-27, uh, over 250 yards, three touchdowns. It's very solid, no turnovers. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a really big thing for Auburn is they stay in this ball game. They're competitive in this ball game only if they do not turn over the football. But Georgia's defense, I believe, is going to force some turnovers in that game, and that's going to ultimately lead to them getting the win. And I don't want to say running away with it, but certainly winning the contest. Well, and I'm kind of on the same side. And I mean, I'm going to say that I'm not going to say that there's no chance. There's definitely a chance that Auburn could play spoiler to either Georgia or Alabama. I just don't see it happening, though. And the reason why is kind of the same with you, but a little different, is let's look at Georgia for a hot second here. Undefeated on the season, and really the closest game, and whenever you hear people talk about this game and talk about Auburn in this game, they go, well, you know, the last time Georgia played a ranked opponent on the road, it was a one-point win over Notre Dame. However, the one thing that some people leave out, let's put the microscope on that game. That was Jake Fromm, Jake from State Fromm, as I like to call him. That was his first true start. That was the first game he was starting. 
the young quarterback getting thrown out there after the injury, ever since, it's been win after win after win. 42-14, I know it was only Sanford, but then you win 31-3 to thir- 31 to three over ranked Mississippi State. 41-0 over Tennessee, 45-14 over Vanderbilt, 52 points on Mizzou, 42 points on Florida, and then 24, like you mentioned, against South Carolina. And ever since that one-point loss, George, or that one-point win, it was a loss for Notre Dame, George has been rolling. I don't think Auburn has what it takes to beat a Jake Fromm at this point in the season. I'm talking week two, Jake Fromm, Fromm just getting that first start, then yeah, Auburn's got the tools to go ahead and beat them. But I think this Georgia team has kind of been rolling a little bit. Now, the thing that people are going to throw out there is besides that Notre Dame team, Mississippi State was ranked. They're not what we thought they were. Tennessee, they're a joke this season. Vanderbilt thought they were for real, but Alabama beat them down. Then Georgia beat them down. They're not for real. Mizzou's Mizzou. I don't care how much, how many times you beat the Florida Skaters. Florida hired, fired their head coach. Enough said there. And then South Carolina isn't a tough opponent at all. Like not taking anything away from Georgia, but you can go through this schedule and say, eh, is their side of the uh, SEC really that tough? However, the next opponent that we talk about in Alabama, they've been kind of doing the same thing except they haven't had that close game that Georgia's had. It's kind of seemed that Alabama walks in, takes care of business, walks out, gets on the buses, and goes home. That's what it seems like for Alabama with their closest win coming this past week, 24-10 to over LSU. And quite honestly, Ricky, even when they have a win like that against LSU, 24-10, to and actually their closest win mm. was the game against Texas, Texas A&M, A&M, 27-19, I believe it yeah. was. Mm-hmm. Um, You're even, right. even when Alabama plays a game and they don't play that great, mm-hmm. they still look like that much of a better team. Yeah. Truly. I mean, they, they, they look like that much more of a sound team and everything like that, and I mm-hmm. think that that's exactly what's going to happen when Auburn... Uh, faces Alabama at home. I I am so confident in this Alabama Crimson Tide team every time they go out there. And the reason mm-hmm. being, they haven't given me a reason why not to be. You know, Jalen Hurts continues to be a, a really good quarterback. He continues to develop. He continues to be able to uh, be, you know, strong with his arm and be able to move with his legs on the ground. He moves the football. He moves the football, and he really doesn't turn the football over, Mm -hmm. and certainly not in crucial situations. This Alabama defense continues to be the best defense in the league. Georgia's defense close behind. Those two teams, they're tough opponents. Yes, you're lucky if you're the Auburn Tigers. You get them both at home. But I don't think we see the Auburn Tigers playing spoiler. I'm going to say this. Although I said earlier, I agree with you. In the end, I think Georgia-Alabama get the win over Auburn, and we meet undefeated Georgia versus undefeated Alabama in the SEC title game. If you asked me, Ricky, which opponent, Georgia or Alabama, do you give Auburn a better shot to upset? I'm going to say Alabama. And the only reason why is I agree with you in the sense of Alabama's looked good this year. And they've just looked like a team where you expect them to win every single game this year. The whole thing with Nick Saban and the rat poison, we can make fun of it until we're blue in the face. It looks like it's working. Because like I said, it looks like this team comes into the stadium, takes care of business, gets on the bus, goes home. They don't let outside distractions get to them. Maybe like uh, James Franklin said, Penn State let the uh, outside distractions get to his team a little bit. However, the thing I look at between the two opponents, when you have a history like Alabama and Auburn do, yes, I know Alabama's owned to that, 45-35-1. and I'm going to say that's owning because during my lifetime, it's basically been Alabama. It was Auburn for a hot while from 02 to 07, but ever since 2008, it's been all roll tied in the Iron Bowl. However, when you have that familiarity with a team, you have that rivalry, I give you a better fighting chance in that game 
than I do from the team from the opposite division in your same conference. And I completely get where you're coming from there. It, it has been a close game in the past. It's been a really good game in the past, as we all know, and we all remember uh, You know, a couple of certain plays. 2013 was the year with the field goal, right? Was that 2013? Was I can't that rem- the year? I, I can't remember if it was fi- 13 or if it was 14. That was. It was the kick six. So that was the field goal. That is the last time that Auburn had beaten Alabama is when they returned that field goal for, what was it, over 100 yards from end zone to end zone to seal that victory 34-28. That was the last time Auburn has beaten Alabama. It's been Alabama ever since the last three years. So, Ricky, I would like to share with you very quickly an interesting thing. Right okay. now, the matchup predictor, Auburn, is predicted to beat Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, 51% uh, favorability going to Auburn. You take a look at, again, for on Georgia's side, you know, we talk about the, you know, the defense and what they've done this season and how mm-hmm. dominant they've been in, in most of their games this year. Uh, Jake Fromm has looked really, really good, and he's been the guy who they've written. You know, yeah. Smart has gone with him uh, completely. You and know, just thinking an injury to Eason that doesn't happen. Fromm doesn't even get in the game. Exactly, exactly. Um, Fromm is creeping up on fifteen hundred yards, fifteen touchdowns, four interceptions. He's taking care of the football for the most part. Mm-hmm. Nick Chubb is coming up on nine hundred yards. He has nine touchdowns on the season. The reason I'm saying those stats, this team is a very, very solid team. Nick Chubb has been very, very good this year. That was one of the things early on, that if Nick Chubb was able to be Nick Chubb or anywhere near the Nick Chubb that we've seen in the past this Mm -hmm. year, they were going to be good. He has, and they've been great. So I think if they continue to do that against Auburn, they're going to definitely get the win. Alabama, the way that they run those running backs, whether it's Williams, whether it's Scarborough, it does not matter. Mm-hmm. That was one thing that they weren't that great at doing this past weekend. LSU's defense pretty good against the run this this weekend. But and, and, and Nick Saban, that was one of his things, especially at halftime, that he was not happy about. He felt that they were ineffective and inconsistent when running the football, which they were. But it was still a game that Alabama was able to win 24-10. to 10. These teams, they win you know as much as they're able to put up points they also win because they are built on defense and they pride themselves on having a solid defense and both of them do georgia alabama do i i'm not saying i don't want to take away from auburn and be like ah well they're not that good Mm -hmm. that's that's not true auburn has looked much better this year than they have in years past to me but and I think that's a big addition because of uh, Jared Stidham. He's been a great addition for them. Yeah. But I still don't know if they have what it takes to take on these two monsters and come out with victories. Well, and you said the key word. And the key word for me in this matchup, now jumping back like you did to Auburn and Georgia, the key word in this game is going to be defense. Both sides. Both sides going to come down to the defense because – First off, with Georgia, on their defense, they're going to have to be really good. And the reason why I say that is the only two teams to have beaten the Auburn Tigers so far this year, LSU, which, like you said, 24-10. We see them this week lose to Alabama 24-10. And what we are talking about, not necessarily as, wow, LSU only put up 10 points. No, we're talking about, wow. Alabama only put up 24 points. That is a testament to the defense. Now, I know in that game, Crimson Tide fans are going to say, but we had, what, five players injured, and if they were healthy, we would have won by more. Okay, but I'm going to still give credit to LSU, really good defense. Then you look at the game that LSU played against Auburn. It was their defense that helped them win that game, 27-23. to I believe that was a home game for LSU against Auburn. That's why Georgia's defense is going to have to create mistakes, get the ball into the hands of their quarterback and Jake Fromm. Yeah, Jake Fromm. Then flipping on the other side, Auburn, they need to, in order to win this game, they need to force Fromm 
into mistakes. Need to force them into mistakes. So far, no team has really gotten the advantage of Jake Fromm. One interception. It's the most he's ever thrown in one game. Notre Dame, Tennessee, Missouri, and Florida. The only teams to have picked off Jake Fromm. And it's usually one. One and done, and you're out of here. You're not getting two. If Auburn can get two, maybe even three interceptions on Jake Fromm, force mistakes from the young freshman quarterback, then they'll be able to win this game. Whichever defense wins the matchup against the opposing quarterback will win this game because whatever, either if it's Stidham or Fromm, whichever one gets that extra advantage will be the one to capitalize and win it for their team. I want to go back to the the Georgia game against South Carolina this past mm-hmm. weekend. Georgia also won 24 to 10 against yep. South Carolina. Georgia also did not have their best game of the season. Mm-hmm. You know, they were a little slow from again, no turnovers in this yep. game. 196, two touchdowns, Chubb over 100 yards on the ground. They just you know, got things done, went in business as usual. They did not, you know, have anything flashy. Mm-hmm. But when you don't turn the football over, it totally helps. They turned over Bentley two times in that game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was Sayonara for South Carolina. Flip and that's, the, and flip that's those what into Georgia. Scores, it's a different game. And, and that's what Georgia can do mm-hmm. for you. So I, I, I think that, you know, that's. That's also something where 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 Georgia has the the upper hand coming into this matchup against Auburn. Their defense so sound. I I really like where they're where they're at defensively. Mm-hmm. Smart has really brought them to a solid place, especially after you know last year wasn't exactly what they you know what they wanted. They've really come to a really solid footing right now. In, uh, in 2017. Well, and I mean, each kind of the next three weeks are going to be very crucial for both teams. Either Georgia and Auburn. We'll focus on them because that's the matchup coming up this week. Because I was listening to Colin Cowherd today. And the one thing he had mentioned on Friday before this past weekend's games is last week, this week, and the week after, he had dubbed Elimination Saturday. And his kind of philosophy was that you get... The when you get towards the rivalry part of the season, you get the game before, which some teams you get that kind of attitude of they're looking forward to the rivalry game, overlook an opponent, get upset. Then you have the rivalry game. One team's got to lose 50 50. One team has to lose that matchup. Then the game after, where like we saw it this week with Ohio State coming off of that big rivalry game, kind of comes in. I'm not going to say not prepared enough, but not with that same intensity that they had for the rivalry game could get upset right after. However, with Georgia and Auburn, they have an extra week tacked onto that because for Georgia, last week that 24-10, I'm going to slide it into that elimination, maybe looking ahead a little bit to Auburn. Ah, it's only South Carolina. Then you've got Auburn this week. Someone's got to lose. Then you've got Kentucky where if you – overlook them they could upset you but then right after you have another rivalry game i know it's non-conference but you have another rivalry game at georgia tech who's a really good team for auburn it's a similar thing they took care of business against texas a&m they have georgia now louisiana monroe i don't expect to be a huge problem but you can never overlook them i think it was jackson state that almost defeated Auburn either last year or the year before, so anything's possible. But then that last game, Auburn even has to play Alabama. So the next three games from this week on for both of these two teams are going to be crucial because the next, I'm going to say the this week and the last week are going to be the most crucial games on their schedule. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be important. You know, if you're if you're Georgia. You want to take care of business here. If you're Auburn, you really want to get a win here, especially knowing that Alabama's coming up. I mean, I don't, I don't. Auburn's 14 right now. Mm-hmm. They're, I mean, that's that's just in the polls. I don't think they're really anywhere mm-hmm. close or near a playoff spot. I mean, I'm sure we've seen uh, you know weirder and stranger things happen, mm-hmm. but 
you know, even if even if Auburn, honestly, Ricky, I don't know if Auburn beat Georgia and beat Alabama if they'd still be able to. I was just to gonna, do it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that. I know that that's I know that that's literally thinking mm-hmm. the craziest thing. Mm-hmm. But you already have two losses. If you beat Georgia and you beat Bama, I I, I don't know. I don't think I still don't think that let, they can make it. Let me put it this way. This is going to be me spitballing here. The thing that also that uh, when I was listening to Colin Coward today that he said and I went, "Yes, I totally agree with you." Did you go you. like that? Yes, I went, "Yes, I totally agree with you." Is he was talking about the playoff and he said that the thing that baffles him is every single year these first rankings for the playoffs come out and people go, "Oh, can you believe this? This is never it's like this happened last year." Oh, this happened two years ago. It's the same thing every year. Something happens, and we treat it like it's never happened before, or it's so shocking. And that's why even last week I said when we talked about the rankings, don't put too much stock into them because these ones don't matter. Like This is just for us to get those first rankings out there and actually be able to talk about playoffs and talk about positioning and jockeying and what the committee can do. I look at Auburn and let's look at this. This this could possibly like this could be the setup for if if they win out and that means win the SEC title. They would win against Georgia. They would beat Alabama. Then guess what? Because the East is the East, guess who they would beat a second time if they won out? Georgia. Because let's say Georgia Loses to Auburn, beats Kentucky. They're six and one. The next team is South Carolina. Guess what, Georgia? Congratulations, you're in the SEC title game right now. You could lose to Kentucky and still be there. You could lose your next two and still be there. You can lose your next three, still be there. So if Auburn was going to win out, they'd have a win over Georgia, who's number one right now. They would then have a win over Alabama, who, guess what? If Alabama beats Georgia, Alabama's number or if Auburn beats Georgia, Alabama's number one. And barring them losing, they would beat they'd be legend killers and beat number one and number one. And then they'd get to play Georgia again. And if they beat Georgia again, that could only solidify their resume. So I would say that Auburn is a sneaky team. Sneaky team. To make it, but do I see them making it? No, I see them maybe at best beating one of Georgia and Auburn. And that's a best case scenario. Georgia and Alabama. Yeah, Georgia and Alabama. Beating one of those two teams, that's your best case scenario. I don't see you beating Georgia, then beating Alabama, then beating Georgia again. If you beat Georgia and then beat Alabama, my money would be on Georgia would get you the second time around, and then all hell would break loose. If you beat Georgia... And you beat Alabama, mm-hmm. and you beat Georgia again. I think I would just go streaking th- through the streets. <laughs> I mean, that's how com- it, if that's, it ha- if it happens, how, can we, can that's we say how, that was on tape? That's how confident I am. All right, it will not. All happen. right, if it happens, you heard it here. We'll get that on the channel. We'll we'll blur the parts out. Don't worry. We'll put the yeah. black. Yeah, we'll, you'll you'll we'll put you'll the, have the tiny black. And you'll have the you. part there where the cops are <laughs> tasing me. Well, you got to do it. Uh, you got to do it like Will Ferrell from old school. Going streaking. We're just gonna have a camera on you, just like old school. But this is where I want to turn it on to you guys. Let us know what do you guys think. Does Auburn have it in them to kind of put a little spoiler on the SEC's hope for the college football playoff to both have Alabama and Georgia in that fourteen playoff? Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section.